would do another festive theme tutorial. So in this week's video, I'm showing you how to make these edible Christmas decorations that you can add onto your cakes. So we've got this glitter bauble, we've got some geometric baubles, we've got these ones that are painted with these really sweet little stars and also a wafer paper decoration. Okay, let's get started. Well, the first ones I'm going to use this mold by Fest Cake London. So this is actually a geometric sphere mold. This one measures six centimeters across for each sphere. And this is actually one of their three part molds. So I can take the back off and we also have these soft plastic inserts. And then as you can see, we've got this geometric shape on the inside. Now on each of these molds, there's actually a line that shows you where to fill your chocolate or candy melts to. And on the front, it tells you that each of your spheres is gonna need 18 grams. Now for the first ones, I'm gonna use pre-colored candy melts. So these are the deco melts by Fun Cakes. I want my baubles when I put them together to really shimmer and shine like Christmas decorations. So I'm also gonna be using some luster dust. This is the metallic luster dust by Sweet Sticks and I'm going to be using the hot pink. So before I melt down my chocolate I'm going to take some of this luster dust on a big fluffy brush and just run that inside my mold. The next thing I'm going to do is melt down those candy melts. Now what I tend to do is melt them down in the microwave starting off with 30 seconds and then doing intervals of 10 to 15 seconds until most of those candy melts have melted when there's only a few of the buttons left and then just stir them through until everything is nicely melted and we have a nice smooth mixture. Now, if you were using real chocolate, you do wanna make sure that you temper your chocolate first. One thing that I love about candy melts is you can just melt it down in the microwave. Once that is melted, I'm then gonna take a spoon and just add that mixture until it comes up to the line. Now, the great thing about these ones is you don't have to work the mixture up the side. You then just wanna take those soft inserts, push those inside and then pop the back on and just flip it over and just work that chocolate right the way down to the bottom of my mold. I can then pop this mold in the fridge for around 10 minutes until all of that candy melt has set and we can remove our spheres. I can start just by removing the back panel. And the thing that I love about these molds is they also have such a nice smooth inside. You can just easily break off any excess. Now I do actually have a 10% off discount code that you can use for any of the chocolate molds on the Fest Cake London website. And I will put all the details in the description below. Now they do have a slight shimmer from that luster dust that we've already added. But if you did want them to have more of a sparkle, you could go in after those spheres have come out, just add a little more shimmer. The next thing to do is to put the two halves of my spheres together. So I've just got a small metal scraper, or you could also use the back of a baking tray. And I've also got my kitchen blowtorch. Now I'm gonna heat up the surface of my scraper, run my sphere over the top, just to melt that edge slightly. And then take my two sides, carefully pop those together, and I'm just gonna wipe off any excess. So that's gonna give us this really pretty ball that is already starting to look like a Christmas decoration. Now I'm gonna leave mine hollow as I'm gonna have these as cake toppers, but you could also add cake inside or even hot chocolate. Now the last thing to do on these ones is just to create the top of our ball ball, which would be where you would connect them to your Christmas tree. The things that I'm gonna use in order to create the top of my ball ball is first of all, I've got some modeling paste. Now I'm just using some of the Saracino, so I've just mixed some of the white with a small amount of black. You could also use fondant or gum paste or whatever you would prefer. I've then got some metallic luster dust and I'm going to be using this with some dipping solution just so I can make them look like silver metal. I've got a brush that has a small amount of water inside, my rolling pin, a circle cutter. So this one measures 1.2 centimeters across and a little cutter. Now this one measures two centimeters across and it's just a five petal cutter. So I'm gonna start by rolling out my modeling paste and I'm gonna keep it a thickness of around six millimeters. I can then use my plunger cutter and just cut out some little discs. 
Now, if you wanted to keep them quite simple, you could keep them looking like this. I'm gonna add a little bit of design around the edge. So I'm gonna take a small amount of my modeling paste, pull this out and cut out some little flower shapes. I can then take my water brush, paint over the back. Taking one of the little round discs, the rounded end on the top, I'm gonna place in the center of that flower. I can then pull those sides down and that's gonna give us a bit of design around the outside. For the little hook on the top, I'm gonna take a really small amount of that modeling paste and roll it into a really thin sausage. Now, the good thing if you are using a modeling paste or a gum paste, then this is gonna hold its shape a little bit better than fondant on its own. Cut off some strands, which are just over a centimeter each. And using the end of your paintbrush or a Dresden tool, you just wanna bend these in half so we're just creating some little loops and then take one of those little tops and just in the top pop two little holes i can add a small amount of water or if you've got some edible glue but that's going to give us the top of our baubles now you could leave them gray i want them to shine a little bit so i am going to use some of the light silver luster dust and again this one is by sweet sticks and just mix in some dipping solution now all the dipping solution is going to do is turn that into an edible paint you can then take the tops of the baubles that we've made and I'm just gonna paint those carefully in that silver. Now, if you didn't wanna use dipping solution, I do have another video where I show six different things that you can add to luster dust to create an edible paint and I will put a link to this in the description below. Once they're dry, you can then either use melted chocolate or candy melts or a small amount of edible glue. I'm just gonna pop that on the top. So there we've got our first Christmas ball ball. Now, if you like a little bit more sparkle at Christmas, and if those first ones didn't have enough shimmer, the next design, I'm gonna use some glitter squares. Now, these are the rose gold glitter squares by the Cake Decorating Company. And I'm gonna start off by making my ball ball in exactly the same way. So instead of using the geometric mold, here I've got a smooth flat sphere mold. And these ones measure seven centimeters in diameter. Now, if you didn't have one of the three part molds, you could also use the plastic sphere molds. Instead of popping the mixture in and pushing in the back, you just wanna spread the mixture up the side and it will work in a very similar way. For these spheres this time i'm going to use a white candy melt now for these ones i still want them pink but instead of using pre-colored candy melts i'm going to color these using some of the color mill in raspberry now the great thing about color mill is it's oil based which means that you can use it to color candy melts and chocolate and it won't cause it to seize and once i'm happy with the color this is ready to add into my mold Place the back on and just work those candy melts all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna pop that into the fridge. Once I can see air bubbles starting to form, I know that they're ready to come out. Now, in order to stick my glitter squares onto my spheres, I want to melt the surface of that chocolate slightly. So I'm gonna take my kitchen blowtorch again, and you wanna keep it moving at all times. So I don't wanna melt my ball completely. I just want to melt the surface, dust those little glitter squares all over the top. Then wanna wait a few minutes until all of that chocolate has hardened again and I can brush off any excess. So that's gonna give me my first half and I'm gonna do my other half. And again, as I did with the previous ones, I'm gonna heat up my scraping tool and I can stick those together. I've just got one of those top pieces that we created and I'm gonna use a little bit of edible glue and that is gonna give us a super Christmassy looking bauble. Okay, so for my next bauble, I'm actually gonna use some edible wafer paper or this is also known as rice paper. You may have seen recently I created a tutorial where I showed you how to create some 3D wafer paper balls to add onto your cake. This is a similar technique, but I'm gonna make it look a little bit more like a Christmas bauble. This wafer paper comes in sheets which are around A5 in 
size and they just have this white color. In the recent tutorial that I did, I used a plunger cutter and this one just had a two inch circle. Now I want my balls to be slightly larger so they match the size of those geometric pink ones. So I've actually created a template. So this is six centimeters in diameter and I'm gonna be cutting out 24 circles for the ball ball. So I'm just taking a few sheets at a time, just cutting out those circles using that template. Once you've got all of your discs, the next thing I'm gonna do is color them. Now you can leave them white, but I'm gonna do them pink so they match my other ball balls. So again, I'm gonna take some of that hot pink luster dust and with my fluffy brush, just go over the top, just adding on that color. And by using the luster dust, we get a nice shimmer. And you wanna do the back and the front. Now all of my discs are colored. The next thing I'm gonna do is just fold all of these directly in half. Now, wafer paper is quite fragile, so don't worry too much if it starts to split on the back. Once they're all folded, I'm gonna take a small bowl of water and a little paintbrush. I'm gonna add a small line halfway and then just stick that together. Now you want it to be quite a thin line of water. I'm just doing around a centimetre, just a little strip and then closing that up. So that water is just gluing those together. And if you leave that a few minutes, they're gonna be nice and secure. So now we have all 24 of our discs, which are folded in half and they're glued in the center. Now I wanna add these all together and I've split them into four piles of six each. This is gonna be a quarter of my ball ball each. Now I'm gonna be gluing the separate semicircles together at the seam, but we also want to glue them together on the sides. So where I added a small amount of water in the center, I then want to add two tiny bits of water at around 45 degrees. So I'm going to add a small piece of water in two diagonals and stick that on top. I can then turn it on its side and I'm going to run some water along that back edge and pinch those together. I'm then gonna do exactly the same and stick my next piece down, turn it around, add some water up the spine and stick all of those pieces together. And I'm gonna do this for all six. And at the moment that might feel quite sticky, but again, if you leave it a few minutes, that will completely dry. So that's gonna make a quarter of our ball ball. So I'm gonna do exactly the same for all the other pieces, just doing them in little blocks of six. Okay, so I've left my four quarters for a few minutes just for that water to dry. And if I start to open them up, you can see we get a really pretty effect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add water on one, just a thin line and stick that on top. And you wanna make sure they're lined up. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of water just down that seam. And when I open that up, we have this really pretty effect. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same to the other one so that I've got two halves stick my two halves together. I'm just making sure that I'm pushing down. They do stick so quickly. I can then on one side, add on those lines and I'm gonna bring the whole thing around. I'm just gonna pinch it together until that is stuck. So this is completely edible and it looks so pretty. Now, the last thing for me to do is to add one of those little Christmas tree toppers at the top. So I'm just gonna use some edible glue for this. So there we have this wafer paper decoration. For my final ball ball, I'm gonna do a slightly smaller one. So I'm gonna use one of my silicone mats and this one just measures 3.8 centimeters across. I've then got a little paint tray and I've just added a few of those little white candy buttons, which I'm gonna melt down in the microwave. Once that's melted, I can then use this as a paint. So I've just got a thin paintbrush and inside my mold, I'm gonna start by painting some little stars and you want that paint quite thick. 
Now, the reason that I'm using the candy melts to paint it into my mold rather than painting these on the outside is if you do paint them inside, when you take that sphere out of the mold, it's going to be nice and smooth on the outside. Another reason for using the candy melts is if you try it and use an edible paint on the outside, it does tend to stay wet and it doesn't dry very easily. So once I've added my design inside my mold, I'm going to pop this in the fridge just for a few minutes so that I know that that candy melt is is completely set. I can then melt down the candy buttons that I've got for the inside. Now my candy melts have melted. I'm actually going to add in a little bit more color just to make them a little bit darker so that those stars will show up. So again I'm just adding in some of that color mill raspberry just to give me this pretty dark pink color. Before I add these into my mold I'm going to leave them for a few minutes just stirring them around cooling those candy melts down as if they are too hot they're going to melt what we've already added into the mold. After a few minutes I'm going to add a teaspoon of the mixture into each and just using the back of my spoon just to pull it up the side of my mold making sure that I get quite a thick lip at the top as this is where we'll be sticking the two parts together. And I'm going to pop these back in the fridge for a few minutes until they have completely hardened. I can then flip that over and turn those out. We have our little semicircles with these little stars. I'm then gonna do exactly the same as I did with the larger ones, just heating up my scraping tool. And then take some of that edible glue as I did before and just stick on one of those tops. And we have this really cute bauble with these little white stars on the surface. So there we have four different ways you can make edible Christmas baubles to add onto your cakes. Depending on the cake that you're making, you can make a selection of different ones or make them all the same. So here I've got a six inch cake and this one just measures four inches in height. And I've offset this on a 10 inch ball just to give me space on the front to add those ball balls. I'm just gonna be sticking these down with a little bit of edible glue, just holding them in place. You could also use some more of that melted candy melt. Now, let me know in the comments below, which one is your favorite? Is there any of these that you'll be making for or your own cakes. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to the Cakes Manage YouTube channel. Now, I will leave a list of all the tools that I've used throughout today's video in the description below so you can find them there. So until next time, bye.